Hey everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to protect your Oracle Cloud free instance from being reclaimed by Oracle. If you're an Oracle free tier user, you're probably aware of some of the requirements that Oracle put up last year. Now, those requirements were put up because a lot of users will get those free instances and never use them. So, what Oracle did is they introduced these requirements. They started first with this 10% requirement, and basically, what they're saying is that if you have an idle, always free instance and what they consider idle instance is an instance that has not had at least 10% of CPU utilization, network utilization or memory utilization in the last seven days. That instance is considered idle and it will be reclaimed by Oracle. Recently, I think it was like mid-April, they changed that requirement and they upped it a little bit. So now what they considered idle instance is an instance that has not used at least 15 percent of its CPU utilization, network utilization, or memory utilization during the last seven days. Um, now, I spoke with a support person from Oracle and they assured me that as long as you meet one of those three requirements, your instance will be safe, so you don't have to worry about meeting all three of them. Now, with all that, a lot of people are wondering, well, how am I going to protect my instance from being reclaimed if I don't use 15 percent of its resources? There are a few things that you can do to protect your instance. The first thing, and that's what I recommend, is go ahead and switch to that paid account. Now, even though you're switching to a paid account, it doesn't mean that you're going to pay for this instance. Even with the paid account, Oracle still gives you that uh, 4 CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM for free. So if you have your account changed to paid account, you can still have your instance running up to that limit and you won't have to pay a penny. And with that, you don't have to worry about meeting those requirements here. Another thing that's actually nice by having the paid account is you never see that out of capacity error that you usually see when you try to create a new instance. I've been running my paid account for several years now and I have never seen out of capacity error that I see pretty much daily when I try to build new instance on my free tier account. So that's the first way to get that do is just move on to paid account. The second way to avoid your instance from being reclaimed of course is to meet the requirements and the easiest way to do that is don't over allocate resources. So basically, um, if you think you're just going to be running a small web server that's barely going to serve any traffic, don't put four CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM. Just use one CPU and six gigs of RAM and that'll probably be small enough machine that when you run your database on it and your web server, it will hit that 15% threshold. But let's say you're somebody that has those four CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM machine and you don't want to give it away, but you also can't meet that 15% percent requirement, then you're going to have to do a few extra steps to protect your machine. And this is what I'm going to show you how to do in today's video. So what are we going to do in today's video is we're going to use a tool called StressNG. StressNG is a command line tool that can be used to induce stress on a computer system's various hardware components, such as the CPU, the memory, the disk. In our case, we use the StressNG to simulate CPU usage and a memory allocation. And that way we can make it so it can meet the minimum requirement requirements put by Oracle and keep our instance safe from being reclaimed. I'm also going to be using a tool called Supervisor CTL and with that tool we will manage the stress NG process and that supervisor will ensure that the stress NG process is always running on our system even after reboot or computer crash. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and connect to your instance and just run apt update to update your repository. So apt update. Oh, and I guess the first thing will be is go ahead and switch to root and then go ahead and run apt update. And once your repos are updated, you can go ahead and install stress ng. So to do that, you run the following command apt install stress ng. Now, once you have stress ng installed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start htop. That application will show me what my current resources usage. So you can see here that I have four CPUs, so zero to three, and my memory, my CPU is barely being used and my memory is only using about 250 megabytes out of that 24 gigs that I have. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and in my Oracle console, I'm going to check my instance metrics. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page. Once the page 
page is refreshed, I'm gonna scroll down and check on to those metrics. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and here as you can see, it's still loading, but as you can see, this is my baseline. So I'm barely using a, even a percent of my CPU. And here it has a little bit of a up here, that's about 6% of it just for a few seconds here. That's when I was probably installing the stress NG and updating my repositories. And if you look at my memory utilization, again, it's barely touching the 2% mark. So way under what their requirement is. So now that we have the stress NG installed, we're gonna go ahead and run it so we can see how we can increase the usage of our CPU or memory. So I'm gonna go ahead, go back to my terminal. I'm gonna leave this window open here so we can see what's happening happening in the back. In here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to root again. And once I'm as root, I'm gonna run the following command. So I'm gonna say stress dash ng dash dash CPU. And here I'm gonna give the number, the CPUs that I wanna put the load on. So in my case, I wanna split it equally. So I have four CPUs. So I'm gonna put load on all four of the CPUs. Now, if you're running instance with two CPUs, you may wanna only put load on two of them. Or if you want, you can put all the load on a single CPU. In my case, I'm gonna put 15% of each of the CPUs and that should total 15% utilization for the virtual machine as a whole. So I'm gonna say Say again, stress ng dash dash CPU four for the number of CPUs that we want to put load on, and then I'm going to say dash dash CPU dash load, and here I'm going to give it what percentage load I want put in those CPUs. So I'm going to say 15 here, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and that will dispatch. They call them hogs, but basically that will put some stress on that CPU, and that will bring it so each CPU runs at 15%. If you go down into your metrics on your machine and give it a minute or two, and you go ahead and refresh your page, you will see at some point that CPU percentage utilization here will go up to about 15 and will stay there. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page here and by now we should see some movement here and we should see this uh, going up. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh and I'm going to scroll down here. And as you can see, we are already up here and we're running around that 15, 15.36%. So um, this is working. I'm going to go back here. You can see those CPUs, they're kind of moving up and down. What's important for you is this average one for the whole machine that's showing here. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. At some point, this will kind of just flatline at 15. It would just stay like this. And let's scroll down again to take a look at it. And as you can see, yes, it flatlined at 15 and from now on, it's just gonna stay here. Now, the way we have it right now, if I close this window, the stress NG will stop and the CPU will drop down to whatever the baseline for this machine is. So as I said earlier, I'm gonna be using a supervisor CTL tool that will help me to set this up so it's constantly running on a machine and the supervisor will watch for it and will make sure that it is running and that it starts on boot and all that. But before I do that, I'm gonna also also want to show you how we can put load on our memory. So I'm going to go ahead now and kill this one. I want to stop putting load on my CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and terminate this. And to do that, you can just go ahead and do control C. And once that's done, as you can see, all the CPU utilization dropped. And eventually when we refresh our console here, this line will drop down to where it was before. But before I do that refresh, I'm going to go ahead and put some load on my memory. So to put load on my memory, uh, we're going to use the same command. So it's going to be stress dash ng. But this time, instead of CPU, we're going to say dash dash VM. Then we're going to follow by dash dash VM dash bytes. And here we're going to give it a what percentage we want to be utilized. Now, whatever we put here is going to be on the top. That's what already used. So if I go here and I look, we already have about two gigs of RAM being used. So if you don't want to go way over the 15% that Oracle requires you to use, you can just put 13 here or maybe 14 to be safe. So let's say I'm going to put 14 and that will bring our utilization somewhere around 16%, right? Maybe even 17. Very important thing here is make sure to go ahead and put dash dash vm dash 
hang space zero. And what that will do is that will take that 14% of your RAM away and it will put it on hold. And the reason why we're doing that is to spare your CPU. Now, if you do that without putting this last part here, that will overload your processor because it will be using 14% of your RAM and it will be running transactions against it and that will spike your CPU. So make sure you put that. So I'm gonna go ahead here and hit enter. And um, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I forgot to put the percentage sign. In this case here, you have to put percent when you're doing the RAM. So I'm gonna put 14% and then I go ahead and start it. Now this will put 14% load on the top of what already our memory is. And as you can see here, we went up to 3.38 gigs. And if I go ahead now here and refresh this page, we should see this spike of uh, memory usage should reflect here. At the same time, this one will drop because we turn off the one that was given load on our CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead, refresh this page. And if I scroll down, you can see that our CPU went down again. It's around 1%, a little bit under 1%, but our RAM is now starting to go up. And uh, at this point, it, it is like right at the end here is using 15% of it. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it one more time here so we can see when it gets to that flat line that's gonna be our new baseline. We have that stress NG running. So I'm gonna go ahead again and refresh the page. And I'm gonna scroll down. Yeah, I can see we're now at 15.5 and um, I guess I'll do one more refresh. I just wanna see it when it gets to that point where it's a flat line at 15. And there you go, you can see it now. We have a flat line where uh, it's using 15% of our memory and that will keep going like this as long as this uh, Stress NG application is running and it's putting load on our memory. Now, as I said earlier, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the supervisor tool in order to put these things into a little uh, supervisor programs. And that way the supervisor will monitor it and will make sure that these are always running. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install the supervisor. So to do that, all you have to do is run apt install supervisor and once you have the supervisor installed go ahead and go into that supervisor configuration files directory and that will be in your Etsy supervisor conf D and in here I'm gonna create a file that will be the configuration file for my job and I'm gonna call that file stress.conf you can call it anything you want just make sure that it is dot conf so I'm gonna say stress.conf again that you could call this file anything you want don't forget to put the text editor that you want to create that file with. in my case I'm going to be using nano and once you have the file open I'm going to go ahead and paste here because I don't want to have to type all that and I'm also going to add all this in a link in the comment section under the video so you can just copy and paste it in your file so you don't have to retype everything so this will be the configuration that we'll put in our supervisor and as you can see here basically we're creating two programs one will be the one that put loads on our CPU and the other one will be the one that put loads in our memory. And as you can see here, basically all we're doing it is telling it to run that same command that we run in our command line. So in this case, we're gonna run, oh, this one is actually from a different config that I used it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it. So I want it to be the same like I run it on my command line. So I'm gonna change this to four. So it loads all four CPUs and I wanna put 15% on each of them. Or did I do it with 14? Ah, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave it with 15 right now. So I'm gonna do it like this. Here you can keep this the way it is. Then here you can tell which user you want to run it as. In my case, I wanna run as root. Out of start, I have it set on true. That means that if my server reboots, this program will automatically start. And our restart, this one is if your process gets killed for some reason, it will auto restart itself. Redirect for standard error will send your errors into your regular log file. I have that set to true, so all my logs go to the same place. And then here's our second program, which I called memory underscore stress. 
And again, we are running here the command that we run in the command line. And I'm going to put here, I don't remember what it was, but let's say 15%. So then down here again, path to where our stress NG is. Again, the user, the auto start and auto restart and where our logs are going to go. Once you have that all done, you can go ahead and save the file. And the next thing you want to do is you're going to run supervisor CTR reread. And what that will do is it will reread this configuration file and it will put it into the running config of the supervisor application. So I'm going to say supervisor CTL reread. All right, and you're going to see this error. Basically, it's telling you that you have an unsupported character. And that is because the supervisor doesn't like the percentage sign down here. I just wanted you to see that error. I purposely left it like this in case you get it so you know what to do. But basically, it doesn't like this percentage character here. And all you have to do is to fix that error is just add a second percentage to escape the one that's already there. And then you can go ahead and save your file. And now if you run the supervisor, or CTR reread that will reload your configuration and again you shouldn't see any errors at this point as long as you have typed everything correctly in your configuration file now once you have all that done you can go ahead and run supervisor CTL but this time I'm gonna say reload and that will reload both programs and it will start them for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And as you can see it says supervisor got restarted and if I go here and say status you can see now that I have two jobs, the CPU stress and memory stress, and both jobs are currently running and you can see their process IDs here. So now if I look here, you can see that all of a sudden my, my CPUs got some load in them, my memory went up to 3.6 gigs. And if we go down here now and we refresh, we will see some load getting into our virtual machine. Again, it's probably gonna take a few seconds until we can actually see it flatline. So I may have to fast forward here a little bit. Maybe I'll give it a minute or two and I'll fast forward so you can see it once it's flatlined. All right, it's already been a couple of minutes since I've refreshed last. So I'm gonna go ahead now and refresh this page again. And at this point, I'm assuming our CPU should be right about 15%, same as our memory. For the memory, actually, maybe even a little bit over that. But let's see what we see. So I'm gonna scroll down here. And you can see our new baseline is right around this 15% for our CPU and for our RAM is now at 16.6. .6. So again, you can tweak those commands. You can go back to your configuration file here and you can quick these values here. So if you want to use a little bit more, a little bit less, you can do the change here. Now, one more thing that I want to show you what you can do with your supervisor is right now we have both of those running. And as I said, I talked to Oracle, they told me that you only need to meet one of the requirements in order to protect your instance. So you may not want to put stress on both CPU and RAM. So you may want to turn off one of these. So let's say we want to turn off our memory stress. So to do that, all you have to do is run supervisor ctl stop and then give it the name of the program that you want to turn off in our case would be memory stress and as you can see it tells you here the memory stress stopped and if i go ahead and run supervisor ctl status we're going to see that the memory stress has stopped now just so you know this is stopped just for this session if you go ahead and restart your server that will start again and the reason is because in our configuration file we have memory stress program set to auto start true so in order to turn it off even on boot you're going to have to go ahead here and instead of true set it on false I'm going to go ahead and save the configuration and then I'm going to go ahead and again run the reread command make sure that if you make configuration changes run the reread command now it picks the change and then I'm going to go ahead and reboot my machine and when it comes back up we're going to have our CPU stress program running but our memory stress program should be turned off so I'm going to give it a minute here and we'll go ahead and try to connect again via SSH to my server seems like it's still not ready let's give it a try again and there you go you're back in so I'm going to go ahead and switch to root and I'm going to go ahead and run supervisor CTL status and as we, you can see, I have my CPU stress program running and the memory stress program is stopped. So if you go here and I'm going to go ahead, refresh this one last time just to confirm that everything looks like what we're expecting. 
and you can see that little drop here where we had our machine off when I did the reboot. But as you can see, the memory now is down to 2% and our CPU is still staying above uh, that 15% that the moment of the refresh was 17. So I'm just going to quickly refresh it one more time. And yeah, I can see that at this point it's going to flatline, it's going to stay around at 15%. So that's all for today. I hope you like this video, you find it useful. If you have any comments, any questions, don't hesitate post under the video and please go ahead click on the like button if you like that video and if you want to see more of my videos go ahead please subscribe for my channel thank you for watching and you have a wonderful day